Hi, my name is Mehdi Al Masri. This is my first video in the year 2020, so I wish you all a happy new year. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can use the new Entity Framework 3.0 core database provider for Azure Cosmos DB. Now, what is Azure Cosmos DB? Well, it's Microsoft's globally distributed multi-model database service. You can interact with the database using four favorite APIs, including SQL, MongoDB, Cassandra, Tables, or Gremlin. In this tutorial, we will be accessing Azure Cosmos DB using the SQL API. In .NET Core 3.0, we got a native entity framework core provider for Azure Cosmos DB. This makes it much easier for developers who are familiar with entity framework core to work with Azure Cosmos DB. The prerequisites before you can continue with this tutorial are, at the time of this video, the latest version of .NET Core is 3.1. As a result, I'm using .NET Core 3.1. You can, however, use any version of .NET Core as long as it is 3.0 or later. The second prerequisite is you need to have an Azure account in order to work with Azure Cosmos DB. And the third thing is, in order to make this tutorial work on any operating system, I will be using VS Code. Of course, prior knowledge of ASP.NET MVC is a big bonus because I will not explain what the roles and responsibilities of models, views, and controllers are in this video. Let's start by creating a Cosmos DB account on Azure. So we will go to portal azure.com and of course you have to log in with your account once you're logged in let's create a resource so you can click on this button and the resource we want to create is a cosmos db account so you can enter cosmos in the filter here and choose azure cosmos db click on the create button here and then we need to fill a few items of data. Let's create a new resource. So I'm going to create a resource called Cosmos DB Demo Resource Group, RG. Next, we can select a location. I'm okay with West US because I am close to that area. The other thing we need to do is the account name. So I shall call this the Cosmos DB Demo account. Notice that you can't use uppercase letters here. The other important thing is we have a number of APIs that we can use. Among them are Core SQL, Azure Cosmos DB for Mongo, Cassandra, Azure Tables, and Gremlin. In order to use Entity Framework 3.0 provider for Cosmos DB, you must select Core SQL. So pretty much most of what we want to do here is set. So let's click on review and create, and then click on the create button after reviewing the settings that you created over here. Now this could take a while, so be patient. And when it's all done, it will give you a button that can take you to the resource that was created. Once the provisioning is complete, you will see a page that looks like this. You can click on the go to resource button and that will take you to the Cosmos DB account. Next step is we can create a new database in this particular account. Let's click on data explorer here. And over on this side, we can click on new container and choose new database. I'm going to model students. So I'm going to call my database college DB. You can keep this provision throughput on and don't change any of these values because it could be expensive if you're abusing Cosmos DB. For our purposes, you can see that the estimated spend is 0 0.032 hourly or 0.77 dollars a day. This is affordable, so let's leave it at that. Click on OK. Now it creates for us a database. The next step is to create a container. A container is the equivalent of a table in a relational database or a collection in say MongoDB. So we'll click on 
new container. By the way, if you want to delete the database, you can delete the entire database by using this option. So now let's click on new container. The container ID is the name of the container and I'm going to call it students. Now there's another thing here and it's the partition key. What's a partition key? Well, the partition key is used to automatically partition data among multiple servers for scalability. I'm going to put for this value simply slash ID and click on OK. This is pretty much what we need to do. The only thing that we need now is to get the credentials and the credentials are obtained by clicking on this keys option down here. Let's click on keys and these are the values that we need. The two values really that we need in order to access the database are the URI and the primary key. So I'm going to copy these and park them in notepad so I can use them later on. This is where I put them in notepad. I can now pretty much close my Azure browser. We can now start building our application. So let me go to a working directory here and drop to the command prompt. At the command prompt, I want to find out what are the various SDKs that I've got. You can do that by typing .NET minus minus list SDKs. And the SDKs that I have are 2.2, 3.0, 3.1. I can either use 3.0 or 3.1 to build my application today because the entity framework driver for Cosmos DB became available as part of .NET Core in .NET Core 3.0. Let me first create a folder for my new app. So I'm going to type in make directory mkdir and I'll call my app Cosmos EF Web. And let me go to that directory. If I want to make sure that my application is using a specific version of .NET Core, I can create a global.json for a particular version. The command would be .NET new global JSON and the SDK version that I want to target is 3.1.100. Now this step is not entirely necessary because the default version will always be the one that you're going to be using. But I'm putting this in here just in case you want to target a specific version. So if I do this and I hit enter, it's going to create for me a global.json file. And if I look at the directory here and I type the contents, you will see that the version that I'm using .NET Core 3.1.100. Now let's create an MVC app. So I do that by typing in .NET new MVC. In order to use Entity Framework with Cosmos DB, I need to add a specific package. So that's my next step. I'm going to add this package, microsoft.entityframeworkcore.cosmos. Now I'm assuming that most people watching this video are pretty much familiar with ASP.NET Core MVC, so I'm not really going to bother about running the app and all that. We'll run the app at the very end. I'll be using Visual Studio Code in order to make this tutorial relevant to anyone on any operating system. I'm going to open my application in VS Code by typing code dot and it will open it up in VS Code. I'm going to model students. So I'm going to create a new class here and I'll call it student. And the code for this class is as follows. I'll paste this code here and as you can see this is a very simple student class. I'll resolve all these namespaces here and you can see that there are essentially four properties ID, first name, last name and school. The ID, the JSON property name is ID lowercase and that applies to all the other properties. The JSON property name is simply 
the property name in lowercase. So this is our very simple student class. I'm going to close this now. The next thing we want to do is set up the credentials that will enable us to talk to Cosmos DB on Azure. And we do that in the appsettings.json file. Let's open this up and I'll paste the template. So the credentials will look something like this. We'll have a new section called Cosmos DB. Now the endpoint is the URI that we copied from Azure, which looked like this. So I'm going to copy this URI and paste it here. And the key is also what we copied from Azure. It'll be this. The name of our database is College DB. That doesn't change. And the container name, if you remember, it was students. So this is all we need to do in app.settings. Now we will be creating a service class that will be the interface between our application and Cosmos DB. So over here, let's create a new folder and we'll call it services. And in the services folder, I'm going to add an interface file, which I will call iCosmos service interface. In the services folder, I'm going to add an interface file, which I will call iCosmos DB service. The code for this will look as follows. This is not a class, it's an interface. So it will be public interface and the name of the interface file. Let's resolve all these namespaces. So we will need to have methods for getting all the students, for getting one student, for adding a student, for updating a student and for deleting a student. The next step is let's create a class that will implement this interface. So I'm going to create a new class here and I'm going to call this one the Cosmos DB service. And the code for this will actually have the implementation of those methods that are in the interface. And it will look like this. Let's resolve these namespaces. A closer look at the code will show that we have a private variable that represents a container. And this is a constructor that takes the Cosmos client, the name of the database, the name of the container. And using this DB client object, you can get the name of the container from the database name and from the container name. This method will add a student and that uses a method belonging to the container called create item async and it will create a student based on the partition key being the id of the student you delete a student as well similarly using the delete item async method belonging the container and you pass it the id and the partition key the next thing here is to get one student to get one student you get the ID of that student, you use a method called read item async belonging to the container and you pass it the ID and the partition key and it will get you the student. To get all the students, you'll pass a query string and you will see later on that this query string looks very much like SQL. Again, you will use the containers get item query iterator that will take the query string and it will return a result and you can iterate through that result to populate a list of students and send back that list. Finally, if you want to update a student, you pass the ID and the student object and there's a method called upsert item async belonging to the container. You pass it the student and the partition key and it will update for you the student object in the database. Now the next step is to make available the service class as a singleton and that's done in startup.cs. So let's go over to startup.cs and here we want to add a helper method 
And the helper method we want to add looks like this. Let me first resolve the namespaces here, and then I will discuss with you what this method does. Now, all of this here is where we're reading the values of the endpoint, the key, the database name, and the container name from the app settings file. Here, we instantiate a Cosmos client builder object using the endpoint and the key. And from there, we will build a client object. We'll pass that client object to the service together with the database name and the container name. It will return for us an instance of this Cosmos DB service. With the client object that we created here, we can pass this command to say create database if not exists async. This basically means that if we don't have that database, for example, if we don't have college DB, it will create one for us. And similarly, using the database object here, you can create a container if it doesn't exist. And if you want to create the container, you can pass it the name and the partition key that will be used. Now, this just returns this service object. Now, where do we use that? Well, the next step is to put some code into the configure services method. So let's come over here into our configure services method and let's paste this code. And this code basically calls that helper method and adds a singleton representing the service class. This is all the plumbing that we need to do to get entity framework to work with Cosmos DB. The rest is simply to create a controller and to create the views. So let's go up here and create an MVC controller. I'm going to add a new file here and I'll call it students controller. The code for students controller looks like this. I'll paste it in here. Let me first resolve all these namespaces. Let's analyze the code. We're declaring here a private instance variable representing the service interface. This is the constructor. We're going to dependency inject the service here and get an instance of the service. This method here is the index action method. This is where we call the service method called get students async that belongs to our service and we pass it a query string and this is where I mentioned to you earlier on that it takes a SQL like query string. Basically we're saying select star from C where C represents the container name. This is the view for create that displays the create form. This is the action method that will display the form for creating or adding a student. This action method is the one responsible for adding a student to the database. The primary key that we're going to be using here is the ID and we're going to simply set the ID to a GUID. This method is the method in our service that adds a student to Cosmos DB. And after that, we're going to redirect to the index page. Next, we have the edit method. And the edit method is responsible for finding a particular student and rendering the view for editing. This edit method here is the one responsible for actually updating the data and it will call a method in the service class called update student async, pass it the ID and the student object, and it will save the updated data. This method here 
is used for displaying the delete confirmation page and it takes an ID, finds the student and renders the view. This is the actual method for deleting. A student takes an ID and it goes off and deletes the student by calling the delete student async method in the service class. Finally, this method is the one that's responsible for displaying student data. It takes an ID, it finds the student and passes it on to the details view. So this is pretty straightforward. Now we are missing the actual views. So let's go over to the views folder here, add a new folder under that called students. And under this folder, which is at the moment empty, we will be creating five views. And they are the index.cshtml file, yate.cshtml file, the details.cshtml file, the edit .cshtml file and the delete .cshtml file. In order to facilitate us accessing the student views, let us add a menu item onto our main layout so that we can click on it and it takes us to the main student's views. And that's done by going under shared and going to this layouts.cshtml and adding some code into the menu system. And this is where the menu system is. So I'm going to add an additional item for students. So over here I'm saying we want to add a new item onto the menu system that points to the students controller and the index action method and the display is going to be simply students. Now all we need to do is put the HTML code for each one of these five view files. Let's start with the index.cshtml and paste this code here. This is very standard code for displaying a list of items. So this is the concrete class that's going to be passed here and it's a, a list of students and that represents the model over here we're going to display the heading for the table and over here we're going to iterate through every item in the list and we'll display the first name, the last name, the school and these are links here for editing details and delete and I shouldn't also forget to mention over here we have another button that will enable us to add a new student. The code for creating is as follows. Now this code also takes a concrete class representing a student and this is the form for adding the first name, the last name, the school and then we have a button down here. You click on that button and it will post back to the controller to save the data. The next code is edit. This one takes a concrete class as well and displays the first name, the last name and the school, but also bear in mind that over here we want to save as a hidden field the ID because that's the primary key which we need in order to save and update the data. At the bottom here we have a save button and then we have a link that takes you back to the index.cshtml page if you wish to cancel. Next let's paste the code for displaying simply details that pertain to a particular student. Over here again we receive a concrete class of a student and we display in a list the first name, the last name, the school and at the bottom you have here a link that will take you to edit if you want to edit that or if you want to go back to the list. And finally, what we're missing is the delete view. And the delete view is very much like the details, but at the bottom here, we have a form. And when you click on the delete button on the form, it will submit 
to the controller which will delete the student. We are now in a position to run this application and see if it actually works. Let's go back to the command prompt and run the following command. Let's do a build just to make sure that we don't have any errors. And sure enough, we don't have any errors and we can do the .NET run. And we can now open this endpoint in our browser to check and test our application. And here we are. We have our app. Click on students. This is the menu item we added before. And we've got this create new student button here. Let's enter a student called Bob Fox. And he's in the school of medicine, for example. Click on create. And there you go. It actually works. It added for us Bob Fox. Let's add another student. Let's say Jane Bond. And let's say she's in the School of Business. Click on Create. Now we have two. Let's edit Jane and change her to the School of Computing. Save. And it saved her. Let's look at the details. It looks good. Let's go back to the list and let's delete Bob Fox. We get a confirmation page. We click on delete and he's gone. So this is a good example of how you can quite easily use Cosmos DB with an MVC application. And for that matter, it could even be a command line application. I hope I showed you the infrastructure that you need to build with regard to the way that you configure the database, you create the containers, you add the appropriate package to your .NET Core app, and how do you create a service so that, so that it's the middle tier between your app and the database, and so on and so forth. And I hope you benefited from this video. I'm going to say goodbye until the next video. Cheers.